Okay, we're doing another show of Sovereign or Slave, my favorite topic. And tonight I'm going to talk about the courts are not the government and have no authority over you. These are arguments to present as evidence. I know it's hard to believe. <clears throat> anyway, when you are charged with any crime, and the definition of crime is a violation of public policy. Public policy, not a trespass. A trespass is somebody violated your rights. You know, they hit you with a baseball bat. That's a trespass. A crime is a violation of public policy. So if there's no public policy that if somebody hits you with a baseball bat, then they didn't do anything wrong. They didn't commit a crime. Let's put it that way. Interesting, huh? The first thing to do is to do a debt validation or order to show cause in the form of a conditional acceptance. The maxims of law are always true. That's what a maxim of law is, is something that's always true. Such as, he who does not deny admits, or an unrebutted affidavit stands as truth. And the system of justice is built around honor and dishonor. When you receive a presentment, document, or instrument making a claim on you, like CPS wants to take your children, or you got a traffic ticket, or you violated a penal code, drunk in public, whatever, you would be in dishonor if you, did not, if you failed to answer it, and you will receive a default judgment. If you fail to show up at court, it's a default judgment. Usually the officer has you sign a promise to appear, right? So if you sign a promise to appear and you don't appear, you fail to honor your obligation. So don't be in dishonor and question the charge or debt owed instead. In the simplest form, it would be making a photocopy of the original presentment, traffic ticket, court summons, notice of default like in a foreclosure, and writing in red pen diagonally across it, refused for cause per UCC 1-308. Then qualify your signature by putting without prejudice. This retains all your rights and without it you lose your rights. Then by colon to the left of your signature and then your signature and below your signature put authorized representative because you're the authorized representative of John Doe in all capital letters. I mean usually you get the presentment in in the name of your straw man fiction, the all capital letter name of your normal name. If your all capital letter name is on the presentment, i.e. John H. Doe, then it is an ends legis legal fiction, not a living soul, and you are the authorized representative of that corporate fiction. I mean, who else is going to stand in and say that, that, that that is their name? After all, you have a credit card, a driver's license, a bank account, you get letters from the IRS, from property tax, from your cell phone. They're all addressed to the all caps name. They're never addressed in your upper and lower case name. And so they expect you to be the representative of that name and to pay for the things that that name is responsible for. And if you look at UCC 3-402, it shows that the authorized representative is not liable for the party that you're signing on behalf of, i.e. John Doe in all capital letters. So to show you how this would work out and the reason for this, let's say that your Bank of America on the signature line, it says Bank of America and the person signing is really the representative of Bank of America because Bank of America is a corporate fiction, right? It doesn't really exist. It's not a living soul. It's a dead estate. Because it's a dead estate, it has no signs, it has no hands to sign, so therefore it could not sign itself up as um, John Doe. So it has to have a representative sign. So somebody's going to sign as the representative of Chase Manhattan or Bank of America. Now, do you think that the CEO of Bank of America wants to be responsible for all the things that Bank of America does? No. So let's just take a look and see what UCC 3-402 says. Now here we can read it. UCC 3-402, signature by the representative. If a person acting or purporting to act as a representative signs an instrument by signing either the name of the representative person 
or the name of the signer, the represented person is bound by the signature. In other words, Bank of America is bound by the signature. The person who signs for Bank of America isn't bound. And in, in the same way, your all caps name is bound for the signature, but you, the signer, are not bound to the same extent that the represented person would be bound if the signature were on a simple contract. If the represented person is bound, the signature of the representative is the authorized signature of the represented person, and the represented person is liable on the instrument. The represented person, in other words, the all capital letter name Bank of America is, is the one responsible, whether or not identified in the instrument. So we go down to here. If the form of the signature shows unambiguously, what would unambiguously be? How about if you actually state authorized representative next to the signature? That's pretty unambiguous. Then the, the signature is made on behalf of the represented person who is identified in the instrument. So if your traffic ticket is for John H. Doe in all capital letters and you sign as the authorized representative, John Doe, the representative is not liable. Get that? Not liable on the instrument. Of course, who's going to actually tell you that? I don't think they're going to tell you that anyway. Get a friend or neighbor or anyone who's not a party to the case that is not named or someone who will be called as a witness to fill out a proof of service by mail and put your response in the letter and mail it back first class if it isn't that important. Certified mail and include the certified mail number in the proof of service if it's more important. And if it's a very important case, then the best form of evidence at a court case will be to get a green signature card where when you send it certified mail, the person who's receiving it will sign a green signature card and they'll ma mail it back to you and now you have evidence of acceptance on their part. They signed for it, so they received it and they accepted it. Of course, they don't have to accept it, they can mail it back to you and not accept it. It's, if it's really, really important, send it registered mail with a green card. Registered mail is a form of mail that's in the private side, and it's more like from an international source to another international source, whereas certified mail is through the post office, and the post office is a private company. It's a private for-profit for corporation. It's not actually part of the United States government, or let's put it this way, not part of the de jure United States government. Next, always try and find a living soul who is a proven responsibility like the CEO or the board member or the chief, you know, call them up and ask who's in charge of the office. Get an actual name of a living soul to send your presentment to, i.e., look up the CEO of the bank who was foreclosing or the judge's name or the clerk of the court's name. Just call up the court and ask who is the uh, chief executive officer of the court and they'll tell you. And then send it to them, like, you know, to Mary Rowe, and don't put chief executive officer of the court, just put her name, you know, Mary Rowe, care of, C slash O, care of the address or the business address where they're operating from. That way your contract is going to the living soul, care of the address and not the fictional court or the bank, the fictional bank, the fictional state, etc. and remains on the private side in the real world and not in the fictional world because the fictional world is the public side of life and it's like Alice in Wonderland there. They are then personally responsible because the court, which is a corporate business, cannot be sent to jail. Only living souls can be sent to jail and have liability. The statement, quote, refused for cause is a counterclaim as they made a claim and you are countering their claim saying you refuse to contract with them unless they can show cause why you have a liability. Under the Sixth Amendment to the Constitution, United States Constitution, you have the right in any criminal case to know the nature and cause of the action against you. 